The Zealots were a political movement in 1st century Second Temple Judaism which sought to incite the people of Judea province to rebel against the Roman Empire and expel it from the Holy Land by force of arms, most notably during the First Jewish, Roman War, 66-70. The practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized, such as those who have physical or intellectual disabilities and members of other minority groups. The ability or willingness to tolerate something, in particular the existence of opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. The tolerance of corruption and advocate of religious tolerance. Prejudice. Preeds. Noun. Preconceived opinion that is not based on reason or actual experience. Prejudice against people from different backgrounds, ingrained religious prejudices. 2. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. 3. You shall have no other gods before me. 4. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. 5. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, six but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Seven you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Eight remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy nine six days you shall labor and do all your work, ten but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. 11 For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. 12 Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. 13 You shall not murder. 14 You shall not commit adultery. 15 You shall not steal. 16 You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. 17 You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 18 When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance 19 and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. But hey, it's me, Uncle Ricky. Yeah, I know this looks a little weird. I'm shooting this with me looking in the mirror, but I'm trying to uh, maybe make a point because looking in the mirror, looking at yourself before you make statements or opinions about others, lifestyles, political views and religious views is important because you have to understand that Whatever comes out of your mouth, you gotta be able to live with yourself before you can live with other people. And I'm not, this is not a moment of confession or anything like that. It's just me vocalizing a viewpoint. And what's really disturbing, I think I've, I've mentioned it before, that I don't really have a whole lot to do with the church anymore, but I do believe in God. And I know some people can't believe, you know, in that concept. Some people believe that there is no belief in God unless you do it through the church. Okay, that's you. But there's something that's going on right now. There's a movement in the church that is really disturbing me. And it's not because it's against me personally, but it's just against people because of their belief. There's no inclusion thing. And look, I, I get it because I understand that currently it's, this, it's aimed at the LGBTQ community. And I don't pretend to understand a whole lot about anything. I mean, I understand maybe the gay part, not that I am gay, but I understand because I know people that are gay. I, I know that they are no better or no worse than the people that I sat with in church. And 
I don't think this thing that because people do certain things or act a certain way or claim a certain lifestyle that they have no right to communicate with God or they have no desire to communicate with God or they are less than because they don't perhaps praise God the way that certain people do. I mean, Christianity is, is a religion, it's a culture, it's a society. Every society has to have its own rules. But see, the thing is that society, any society is composed of individuals, different individuals, and every individual does not have the same mindset. There, of course, you know, there's doctrines and teachings and preachings and, you know, cherry picking verses out of the Bible to support this point and that point. And even in Christianity, you have different sects of Christianity because they differ on different viewpoints of what is correct and what is adequate and what is, I guess, satisfying in the eyes of God. I mean, Christianity is composed of several different religions. First, the largest being Catholicism, mainly because you are born into Catholicism. In other words, if your parents are Catholic, you are born Catholic. You have, that's just, you have no choice. And that's good for some, but for others it causes a lot of headaches and they eventually end up leaving the Catholic Church. Then you have Protestants, which is a lot, well, I'm sorry, in between Catholicism and, and, and Protestant is the Orthodox Church. And then you got to split in that because you got the Eastern Orthodox and then you have Western Orthodox religion. And it's all about the ceremony. It's all about strict adherence. And a lot of people walk away from that because it has no room for inclusion or difference. And I'm not even talking about sexual differences. I'm talking about just daily lifestyle differences. Then you have Protestants. And Protestants is a gambit of different, you have Baptists, you have Methodists, you have Lutherans, you have Episcopalians, on and on and on. And the smallest sect is perhaps the evangelical, but it's growing in popularity. The problem I have is that a lot of Christians are talking this, there is no such thing as inclusion. And I get it because there, there's things that happen in other cultures with other people that trouble them, not only biblically but socially. But the thing is, when you mix this belief with politics because it seems that, okay, the law of the Bible isn't good enough to totally promote the Word of God so that it is universal, that everybody has to comply. And, you know, there's, there's certain, there's certain, you know, political sex religious sex, all you gotta do is comply and it's gonna be all right. That's, some, that's one thing. But when it comes to the fact that if you are different, if you are not like we are, that we have the right, ordained by God per se, to treat you differently because we don't want what you have to infect us. Well, first of all, it's hard to infect something when it's already there. There's, there's, there's abnormalities, or different uh, attitudes in the church. Some of it gets explained away, you know, like, well, what happens between two consenting adults, two married people, it's okay. On and on and on and on. But it's amazing how when the very thing that a lot of these people preach against, when they get caught in the trap, when they get exposed, or when someone close to them gets exposed, it's a different story. 
So how valid was your opinion to start with? And the biggest thing that, that gets to me is this. Jesus Christ, the, whole, the, the one that laid down all the teachings that supposedly Christianity is based on. He never, he never taught exclusion. He went out into the world and accepted people just as they are as long as they were willing to follow him. Didn't mean that you had to drop everything you want that you were doing. It didn't mean that you had to automatically become holier than thou or everybody has to be eligible for sainthood before they go on to heaven. And it's not a straight path to heaven, even though some, you know, Christian sects believe, you know, that it is. But the Bible tells you, everybody got to, you know, if you want to, if you want to believe in the Bible, you got to buy into the whole thing. And it tells you that there is a judgment. And when it says that when you get judged, it's not about, you know, what religious banner you claim, what religion you were in. It's about what you did as an individual while you were here on this rotating piece of and that's where me personally and probably a lot of others you maybe you're afraid to admit it have problems and I'm not saying look I don't do church because it doesn't do me and it's not that I'm any better than anybody in church or that I'm too or that I'm too bad to be in church I don't do church because church gets in the way of my relationship with God. And I'm not saying that I'm trying to do God on my own terms. What I'm saying is because of what I have learned about church, what I have learned to appreciate from the Bible as far as a relationship with God, a relationship with the Lord, the church violates that on several different levels all the time and they think it's all right because they cover it by saying we're doing it in the name of God don't question God don't because if you question me if you question the people that are in authority over you you are questioning God ain't none of y'all God and I don't even think that God doesn't think that human beings will question people that's why he gave us or he gave us dominion over all the other animals, even though it seems that some animals are in the process of taking things back and all of them ain't on four legs. But it's a relationship that, that requires one-on-one, -on -one, not blanket. I mean, I'm, God, I'm pretty sure God is pleased when he sees a church, when he sees people coming together in his name under one banner. But his main concern is the individual. The Bible says that he's gonna reclaim all of those that belong to him. And if there's a heaven and a hell, heaven is supposed to be for the people that follow God, believe in God, and hell is supposed to be for the sinner, the one that turns away from the way of God. Then that means that there must be a that God accepts your decisions. And just blanket identifying with stuff just because somebody says it's in the name of God, that causes all kinds of problems. Wars, Christians have started more wars than the craziest sociopaths. And the sociopaths that started wars, most of them were careful to enlist religions, especially Christianity, in their cause. Catholic Church, the Holocaust, how they stood by and twiddled their thumbs, knowing what was happening to the Jews. In some cases, certain priests helping because they thought the Jews were less than animals because the Hebrews crucified Christ. Now with the LGBTQ thing, yeah, it's, it's, it's unsettling to me on several different levels. But one thing I have learned that a lot of the times it's unsettling because you have no understanding. And if you want to shut yourself off and close the doors and refuse to talk to people, 
demean people, vilify people just because they want to practice a certain lifestyle when they are doing nothing to physically harm you, when they are doing nothing to go against what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. All they're saying is just let me be me. Sure, I might not like what you do, but I don't have to do what you do. And because I have that freedom not to do what you do, then why should it concern me? And if I'm that concerned as a Christian, then I should be reaching out to you to show you what I believe is a better path. Not to put you down, not to dehumanize you, not to make you feel less than, especially trying to make the law, which goes over everybody, Christian, Jew, Islam, Buddha, every, including witchcraft and Satanism. The law affects everybody. And who basically, I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest. Who said that Christians should be in charge? Hmm? Yes, Christians have been have been put down. Christians have been marginalized and suffered great pain and persecution in the name of Christ. The Bible tells you that it's going to happen. I think some of us wrap us wrap it around, wrap ourselves around that image, and promote stuff just to see suffering. But God's vengeance is, is, is mine. Laws are made for society. Laws are not made for religion. We have to learn and to get along in this country. It doesn't mean that, hey, if I reach out and try to work with a person of the LGBTQ community to make things, life better for society as a whole, recognizing that they have an input because they are part of society, that doesn't make me a sinner. That doesn't make, that doesn't shake my belief in God. That doesn't temper my belief in God. That doesn't change my morals. It just means that I want to treat other human beings like I want to be treated. Basic tenet of the Bible. There's bad, there's, there's, there's bad members of the LGBTQ community that commit crimes, that commit atrocities, but that's not the norm. Just like there are members of the Christian community and a lot of them in the pulpit that commit crimes and atrocities against Christians, mostly the ones in their churches. I can't look myself in the mirror, that's why I'm shooting this in front of the mirror, and say certain things and blame it or try to support it because I'm a member of a certain club. Just like I can't support lifestyles of other people, but that doesn't mean that I can't recognize them as human beings. It doesn't mean that I, can't, I don't recognize the point that I have to learn how to work with them because they are there, they are part of this world, and in order for society, for a country to stay valid, to stay, uh, I don't know, to have, have, <laughs> to have a reason to continue, people have to learn to get along with different people. I get this anti-inclusion thing because it, it goes against what you believe your values are. But that church, that religion, that's your club. This country is something different. And Jesus Christ said, give unto Caesar that which is Caesar. Give unto the Lord that which is the Lord. And it seems if you look in your Bible, every human soul, even though God created everything, is not of the Lord. Why do you think we have a Satan? Why do you think we have demons? They, they were the lords. They were angels at one time. Because, but because they didn't cooperate, they were kicked out of heaven. 
thing is, we cannot recreate heaven here on earth. When Adam and Eve ate the fruit, ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge, man lost its privilege to heaven on earth. God kicked them out and kicked them back into a society where there was everything. And it was up to them if they wanted to continue their friendship with God, if they wanted to continue their relationship with the Lord, they had to learn how to remain in that society and still do the work of the Lord. Not go and take over society. This is the danger. Are you going to turn against the basic tenets of your belief in order to rule society when it's not going when you because it's not going to do you any good when you get to heaven. Well, yeah, we took over the country, God. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you as an individual committed so many sins and made me upset in the process of doing things in my name. And in the Ten Commandments, it, it, it talks about people doing stuff of their own agenda in the name of God. God said, yeah, he's not going to tolerate it, and you will be judged harshly. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I'm sure that there's other people out there that feel like me. But who knows where this is going to go. Who knows how it's going to come out. But all I know is what I believe and I believe in God. And I don't believe that this use of the Bible to cover political intent or political intent using religious theory to boost an opinion in the world. Because like I said, this rotating piece of dirt or whatever country you're in, it's temporary. And when it's done for you or when it's done for the world, that country, that church, they're not gonna be standing with you when you face the judgment. And you're going to be responsible for everything you did, whether you thought you were doing it in the name of the Lord or whether you knew you were just doing it just to be doing it because it made you happy. Think about it. Meditate on it. Pray on it. But we got to find a way to stop shutting people out just because they don't look like us or they don't pray like us or they don't vote like us. You know, it's crazy, it's crazy because everybody is ready to put God against a group, a community, when maybe it's more them than God. God laid out his rules. God told you what was gonna happen. So why, and because God is all powerful, why is it up to you? To enforce the Word of God. It's up to you to teach the Word of God and let people make up their own minds. Christ, when he was on the cross, the last two people he spoke to in human form were sinners. And he didn't go at them because of their sin or the crimes they committed. He just offered them the invitation to the hereafter, to heaven. Now, we think that because we believe one way and we practice one way, that we're not responsible for offering that same invitation. We can't save nobody. We can't decide no, where anybody goes because we got to face the same judgment they got to face. All we can do is offer it to them. If they take it, they take it. If they don't, they don't. But as far as the world goes, we got to learn how to deal with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That's it for me. That's all I got to say. Look in the mirror the next time you make a decision on who and what you want to follow or who and what you think you're following. As always, peace out. Most of all, most importantly, 
even though I may not agree with the church, but because I understand that my relationship with God is more than one on one thing, God bless everybody because I want everybody to have that opportunity to have that relationship with God regardless of who you are, what you believe, who you want to sleep with, and how you want to sleep with. Because in God's eyes, I really think he looks at that as petty. Because to be with him, everybody got to leave behind something. You got to sacrifice something to be with God. So, you know, if that's that, if that's that bad in God's eyes, let them decide what they want to do. See you.